On Capitol Hill today, they had a visitor, Donald Trump Jr. Um, he was there this morning answering questions about his now infamous meeting with the Russians last year at Trump Tower. He issued a statement saying he was there for more than five hours and he hopes the interview, his words fully satisfied their inquiry, end quote. Now, you'd think they'd ask him about the constantly changing story. First, he said he never met with any Russians on behalf of the campaign. Then he said the meeting, well, yes, it did happen, in fact, but it just focused on the issue of Russian adoptions. Only when the New York Times got a hold of the emails showing, in fact, that he met with him and was told they had dirt on Hillary Clinton did, in fact, he fessed up. Here is how the Times described Don Jr.'s meeting with the Senate Judiciary Committee investigators today. Quote, he told Senate investigators that he set up a June 2016 meeting with a Russian attorney because he was intrigued that she might have damaging information about Hillary Clinton, saying it was important to learn about Mrs. Clinton's fitness to be president. Well, we have uh, Don Jr., the growing probe into former campaign manager Paul Manafort. And don't forget about that Trump Tower in Russia. A whole lot to talk about with former federal prosecutor Roland Riappel. And uh, Roland, as always, I appreciate the time here. Uh, what, if anything, you take away Pleasure from to what... Be here, Richard. Thank you. Uh, what, if anything, do you take away from what uh, apparently happened or didn't happen in the five hours behind closed doors with Donnie Jr.? Well, the, first of all, the fact that it went on for five hours uh, is a clear indication that Congress and the congressional committees have a lot of questions for Don Jr. And that's not surprising. Um, anytime you have a meeting like this with a number of people in it, they're all going to tell stories about what happened and they're not, those stories are not going to match up perfectly. Um, I think the committee is going to test Don Jr.'s version of the facts here very carefully and uh, they're looking to f catch him uh, telling falsehoods, and they may. We will see. Well, we, we mentioned the committee, and obviously we know uh, Bob Mueller and his team of prosecutors are having their own probe. The idea of competing probes and rumor deals uh, that are being proffered um, to maybe some of the eyewitnesses by some of the members on certain intelligence mm -hmm. committees, how much does that confuse things, or are they coordinated? Well, uh, to some degree, they are coordinated between Mueller and uh, the Congress. Um, Mueller will discourage Congress from giving anyone immunity because the grant of immunity from Congress will prevent Mueller from prosecuting that person. So there will certainly be a good deal of coordination between Mueller and Congress about who is called and when they're called and under what terms they are called. However, there does appear to be a clear effort on the part of some of these committees to obscure the issues, cloud the issues, protect Mr. Trump. And I'm thinking in particular of uh, the, the brouhaha over Susan Rice and unmasking uh, the identity of certain persons in the Trump administration. That's really a red herring here, and that's being pursued, I think, by the committees that are pursuing it for precisely the purpose of distracting us from uh, the real issue of how deeply was Mr. Trump's campaign involved with the Russians. So there is coordination, but there's also a great deal of gamesmanship going on here. To that end, Roland, the, the one constant name that seems to come up is uh, Mr. Paul Manafort. He yes. doesn't have any blood connection. Yes. He certainly has got a lifetime here of uh, interesting clients, let's say. Where do you think the focus is right now, specifically on the Mueller probe, and also why is the New York Attorney General potentially getting involved here as well? I, I think the reason for the involvement of the New York Attorney General is to send a signal to Mr. Trump that he cannot preemptively pardon someone like Mr. Manafort to uh, spare him any kind of federal prosecution or any kind of prosecution at all. Uh, the reason that uh, the New York Attorney General surfaced and surfaced so publicly is that Mr. Trump does not have the power to pardon Mr. Manafort for a crime under New York state law. And it appears, based on what we learn from the newspapers, that there may well have been criminal activity here in New York State by Mr. Manafort that could be prosecuted by Mr. Schneiderman. And if that's so, Mr. Trump can't pardon that conduct. And Mr. Mueller wants Mr. Trump to know that and wants Mr. Manafort to know that. Because I'm sure there's a great deal of effort right now 
to get Mr. Manafort to cooperate with the Mueller probe. And uh, now that Mr. Manafort knows that Mr. M Mueller is working with Mr. Schneiderman and vice versa, he should know that he cannot be pardoned out of uh, his conduct here in this case. And that, that was a signal that was sent by Mr. Mueller. You know, uh, obviously we all know the expression, follow the money, and a lot of people I respect say, look to the Trump Tower as it relates to Moscow or that proposed project. A lot of um, mm -hmm. uh, tentacles seem to be coming out of that with a lot of the same common players. Tell people why that project and the discussions that surrounded that could have a major uh, bearing here on this investigation. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that this is something that Mr. Mueller is looking into very closely and doing all that he can to learn all he can about it. Because remember, there was talk of building a Trump Tower in Moscow uh, at the time the Trump campaign was gearing up. So the timing of this is really interesting. Um, and we also, of course, have the false denials from Mr. Trump that he had nothing to do with Russia. He had no deals in Russia. He knew nothing about a deal in Russia. That, those denials appear to have been utterly false. And the fact that there was a uh, possible business project in Moscow at the very point that the Trump campaign was beginning to take off is something that's very, very uh, interesting and worthy of investigation. Mr. Mueller needs to find out, was uh, Trump uh, talking to people in the Russian government looking for some kind of favors in connection with this Moscow project? Was some favor offered to Mr. Trump in connection with this Moscow project in exchange for, say, lifting the sanctions of the Magnitsky Act, which was the subject of that June meeting between Don Jr and Ms. Veselnitskaya, the Russian lawyer. So the fact that Trump did have a potential real estate interest in Russia at the time his campaign was getting started is a very interesting fact and well worth Mr. Mueller's attention. Uh, and we know not too much about it at this point, but I'm sure we'll know a lot by the end. Um, it's certainly a lot to keep Mr. Mueller busy, but Roland, I appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much. Happy to be here, Richard. It's a pleasure. Coming up next, everyone, every picture tells a story. And this one's, well, it could explain a whole lot about the growing rift when it comes to the GOP. Stay with us.